Kirk, uh, I was talking yesterday with, with Carol and Tien, our, our video producers, and I was telling them about Xilinx and bragging about how I knew the company for years back and telling them all about FPGAs and stuff. But it turns out we're here to talk about analog. That's so right. what the heck? How, how do you guys become an analog company? Well, if you look at kind of the evolution of Xilinx over the, the last number of years, we've uh, continued to expand our footprint and uh, you know, really expand the functionality that we're putting in our devices. And uh, analog is really just the next logical evolution of the integration that we've been doing as a company. Okay, so you've, you've produced an RF SOC, a radio frequency system on chip. What, what, what goes into that? What does that mean? Yeah, so what an RF SOC is, is, is fundamentally it's based upon our Zinc UltraScale Plus MPSOC architecture that's in production mm -hmm. today. It's built on 16 nanometer FinFET plus process technology from TSMC mm -hmm. and leverages a multi-processing uh, system on a chip heterogeneous architecture uh, developed with uh, multiple different ARM processing cores okay. as well as our uh, programmable logic fabric that we obviously are, of uh, are famous for. Mm -hmm. um, and then combined with all of that, we've also integrated uh, the RF DACs and A to Ds uh, to make it an RF SOC. Okay, so what we're talking about is an integration story, basically. It's, it, it's what you've been doing for years with yeah, different it's, components. It's but, very mm -hmm. consistent with what Xilinx has been doing over the last decade plus. If you look at what it offers in terms of integration, in terms of power reduction, and in terms of flexibility, because now our customers can actually build uh, you know, a multi-band radio on a chip. We can actually program the different DACs and A to Ds to different frequency bands. And within a single chip, you can mm -hmm. support multiple different frequency bands on, the, on one particular PCB. Okay, so what makes this the right time to do this? Because I guess you could have tried this at any point, right? Our customers need to get more compact systems that are more power efficient um, and that are more flexible. Because if you look at you know, wireless, for example, they're going into massive MIMO implementations where you've got multiple transmit, multiple receive antennas. So when you go back to the traditional method of doing these types of things where you have you know, a digital device at the heart of the system doing all the processing, and then you've got multiple DACs and A to Ds plugged into it, it, it really just starts to explode your, your board level complexity, the size of your board, it really becomes unmanageable, right? So you want, you know, customers want to build eight by eight, 16 by 16, 32 by 32, even 64 by 64, <laughs> Um, you know, radio systems, right? So the number of data converters is exploding, the complexity is exploding. So to get that all integrated, you know, into a single chip, we've got devices in this family that can go all the way up to 16 by 16 in a single chip. You know, that really gives them tremendous flexibility and tremendous integration potential. Uh, it sounds a lot more advanced than what I'm used to. What, what, what's going on with RF these days? Um, they're moving to direct RF sampling, which basically means that you sample at very high frequency, the, the same kind of frequency that you're operating at. What that allows you to do then is to do all of the digital filtering. All the filtering can now be done in the digital domain. So that the benefits of direct RF really are that you can move that sampling now right up to the point you're sampling literally right at the LNA. And then by wow. doing that, um, now you can do all of that filtering and all of that bandpass filtering can all be done in the digital domain. Mm -hmm. You can leverage all of the modern techniques of digital signal processing. And what we've actually done with our RF SOC is we've, we've put all of that um, digital up conversion, digital down conversion, and filtering capability in hardened logic right behind our DAC and A to D before it actually mm -hmm. comes right into the programmable logic fabric of our device. Again, it's a very configurable subsystem there. Our, through our standard tools, customers can configure mm -hmm. um, the uh, digital up converter, digital down converter. They can configure uh, the filtering that they want. And what that really enables them to do then is to build a multi-band radio on a chip where you can actually have different frequency bands. And, and the holy grail that customers are really after is a software-defined radio yep. where I can build one radio PCB bomb and then I can program it to run at whatever particular frequency band I want it to run at, you know, it, it makes it even more compelling for people to stay in a device like this longer. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we can be fairly cost effective here in terms of the overall bomb cost of the system. So we do believe that we will have a longer tail um, with this product as, you know, you look at the volumes okay. ramping on 5G. And, you know, the other thing that, you know, we haven't really touched on, but this product plays not only in the remote radio head, but also on the baseband and the microwave backhaul side of things as well. There are a number of devices in the RF SOC family, and we've tailored it to kind of hit all of the sweet spots of the market. So the remote radio head, um, the baseband side of things, and the microwave backhaul side of things. Now, you talked about some of this at Mobile World Congress, but how, 
how real is it? When, when, when do the chips actually happen? So, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm very pleased to say that it's real right now. Uh, we've mm -hmm. already uh, shipped product to multiple uh, customers, uh, both in the wireless industry and in the uh, aerospace and defense uh, side of things, predominantly for radar applications. This is something that we have uh, right here, right now.